All right, welcome in. I'm the Kodiak, and today let's talk some Michael Penix Jr., but before we get into that, leave a like if you enjoy, or as I always say, you can wait until the end, and hopefully I will have earned it. Leave a comment. Uh, let me know what you think of Michael Penix Jr. Make sure to subscribe because I'll be making draft content every single day from here until the draft, but yeah, let's get right into our breakdown on Michael Penix. So coming out of Tampa Bay Tech in Florida, he was a three-star recruit. He didn't have a lot of prowess as a recruit, but ended up going to an Indiana team under Tom Allen that was at a crossroads. He tore his ACL his freshman season in 2018, and throughout his whole time at Indiana, he may have been legitimately one of the most unlucky college football players that I can remember, having four consecutive season-ending injuries. In 2019, Indiana's offensive coordinator and quarterback coach was Kalen DeBoer. More on this later. Uh, Penix looked extremely promising in 2020, but with another season cut short due to injury in 2021, Indiana absolutely face-planted with a 2-10 record and 0-9 in conference play. So the reason he transferred from Indiana to Washington was he was just ready for a fresh start, and boy, did he break out in a huge way at UW. UW went from 4-8 in 2021 to having an incredible first year with Michael Penix and DeBoer finishing with an 11-2 record. Penix was the NCAA leader in passing yards and was named the Comeback Player of the Year. It probably helped that UW was loaded and he was throwing to guys like Jalen McMillan, Romo Dunze, and Jalen Polk, and Odunze, who will probably be a top 10 pick in this year's NFL Draft. But now it's time to talk about him when it comes to him as a prospect and why or why not teams will look to consider him with their first round pick in this upcoming draft. There's a lot of QB needy teams, even if there aren't ones who are picking early, so it's time to dissect what kind of QB Michael Penix is going to be in the NFL. Penix is a gunslinger, first and foremost. He threw it downfield all day long at Washington. That was a big part of their offense, and I haven't seen a quarterback from this class yet that was as clean as Penix was at pushing the ball downfield. And he's not your stereotypical gunslinger either. He's not throwing picks, he's not being risky. He's a very risk-averse quarterback. He throws with a great base, one of the tightest spirals I have seen around. And I love watching him throw the ball because when he is on, you cannot stop him. I don't know how you account for some of these throws. So much touch, lots of good accuracy, lots of finesse, big-time throws. Such a great ball. He has a naturally strong throwing arm, too. His passing ability is going to wow NFL teams. The mental part of his NFL game is also very developed. He was very good in utilizing all of Washington's offensive weapons properly, and I'm a big fan of quarterbacks who manipulate the defensive backs by using their eyes and their brain, and Penix did that to a T and then some. He's very tough and very, I don't want to say immune to pressure, because that's not the case, as I'll talk about later, but he'll drop dimes uh, occasionally, even with defenders screaming in his face. Penix's arm strength was on par with May for me as one of the strongest in the class, and Penix is a lot more consistent than May was, and he was lights out in the past two years, and I can see why people would be excited about him, why people have strong projections for him, and why people say he's going to be a great quarterback, at least in the NFL. He has an NFL-ready arm, he can make big-time NFL throws, and he's definitely mentally beyond his years as a quarterback. But I'm going to be completely honest here. I'm not sure if I see a future NFL quarterback. The guy makes some absurd throws, but I don't know where he stands or will, where he will stand in the eyes of NFL front offices, but I'm pumping the brakes for a few reasons. So let's get into the injury history. It's rather insignificant to me. I don't care about it. Same with age, especially because prospects now are getting older and some are staying in school longer and COVID and all that stuff. So it's not necessarily their fault. But at the same time, Michael Penix has some things in his game that he's got to clean up if we're projecting him to be a plus starter in the NFL. Now, we just got to get one thing straight. He's kind of a disaster on the move, and that archetype just doesn't really work in the modern NFL anymore. It's kept guys like Tua from stepping up into the elite tier of quarterbacks. Penix under pressure or on the move is a complete disaster, and he's a very experienced quarterback who is unlikely to be able to fix it, at least in this point of his career. I can't see how you would really consider him in the top 10 or top 15 in this year's draft. And it's very possible that Odunze made Penix in the same way Addison made Pickett. The very bizarre release that he has seems to affect his throws. Granted, I know I talked ad nauseum about how great of a passer he is and 
how I believe him to translate that to the next level. But the release seems to affect certain throws made under pressure and throws he has to make on the move. You kind of need an absolute wagon of an NFL team around a guy like this to make this archetype work. And there's a solid chance that he's going to be going to a shitty team. So I'm just not fully on board with the idea of him. He's pretty comfortably behind May, Williams, and Daniels for me. I know that he really didn't have a huge breakout at Indiana. Uh, and he finally did pick it up when he went to Washington. But I don't know. I would have liked to have seen an earlier breakout because you know, the evidence is clear. Good players are good right away. We have had a, quite a few late risers over the past few draft processes. Think about Joe Burrow, Jaden Daniels is also one from this class. But yeah, I just would have liked to have seen an earlier breakout for him. And I don't think he's a first-round quarterback just because he really does not fit what the modern NFL should try to see at the quarterback position. So yeah, that does it for me, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.